Hey guys, Power Dick here. Welcome back to the Baseball Dads Podcast. Have you ever struggled to figure out exactly where your role is as a dad? Um, are you supposed to be the guy that's way off in the center field bleachers, that's kind of disconnected from the game and what's going on? Are, are you supposed to be close to the close to the game in the bleachers, cheering him on, rah, rah? Are you supposed to be one of those guys that's up against the fence, you know, the club, the little club that, that happens on these teams, that you're up against the fence? Um, are you supposed to be, uh, you know, giving him instruction during the game? Are you supposed to be bringing him Gatorade? Are you supposed to be keeping his pitch hard and in miles per hour and batting average against and all these other things? where are you supposed to be it's a fair question it's a question that can it's a confusing question right because like we've talked about in earlier podcasts the game has changed it's it's different you know we don't have any we don't have a model to go on for this this new game that we're all um experiencing now so so where is it that you go well you know i i I've met, I've seen it both ways. I've seen dads that are so disconnected that sit off into uh, sit off in the center of your bleachers and never say a word, and or sit in the car and watch the game from the car. And, and then I've had dads that have sat down with me for for instruction with their son that will bring me the pitch charts of every pitch they've ever thrown and how their son, uh, you know, on three days rest, their son they hit three ten against my son. On five days rest, they hit two forty five and his ball strike ratio and his average miles per hour and all these other things, and they've got all this stuff and you know what happens in the end the end result is the same it's the same because i'm going to tell you that the kid i'm going to tell you how the kid feels because it's not it's not it, it, it's it's the behavior of the dad is going to produce the result of the son a, a, a son will never outgrow the self-esteem of his father the beliefs of his father the action of his father because that's what you're modeling he's going to become what you're modeling and you know, we've talked about before in other podcasts that kids spell love, attention, time, but that attention and that time has to be positively directed and positive with positive intent. So what I see a lot of is I see the dad who's so disconnected, the kid thinks he doesn't care. And so the kid's like looking for a place to go and, the, and he's like, well, I, you know, it just doesn't seem like my dad really cares too much about what I'm doing. Then I got the guy that's so overconnected that the kid feels all he cares about is baseball. He doesn't care about me. So the end result in the two situations, the, the two extremes, is that the kid doesn't feel anything, right? The kid feels like you don't care. Either you don't care because you're not watching, or you don't care about me. All you care about is baseball. You care about the end result, and the kid feels the same way in the end. So what do you be? How do you act? Where do you go? Obviously, it's somewhere in the middle of those things, right? But should you be in the club, guys on the fence? You got to have that fence stance, you know? Are, are you there yelling, get your elbow up, and all that kind of stuff? I'm going to ask you to consider a consider a new position during this podcast. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to consider something that maybe you haven't thought about before. But what I'm going to ask you to do is look at your situation and and your role as a father as mortar. Mortar, the thing that holds bricks together, mortar. So if you're if you're looking uh, if you're listening, you can go on YouTube. You would see I pulled out my whiteboard and I drew a very kind of elementary sketch of of bricks. And what you notice is that that red bricks uh, are held together by mortar. And the thing that makes a red brick building unique and and like kind of uh, beautiful when it's done well, right, is the is the arrangements of the bricks. But the strength of that building is not so much in the bricks, but how the bricks are connected. And so what I would suggest to you today is that you want to be the mortar of your son's life and think about all the things that you're doing as building this structure, this red brick building, and you're going to be the thing that's going to connect them together. Now, I'm going to first talk to you about walls of your building. So you can have uh, you can have one wall that's your wall of baseball, one wall that's your wall of academics, one more that's your social wall, your faith, your family, and all these things, and have all these walls that are connecting. You're the one that takes the bricks and shows them how everything, the walls join together, how the bricks join together, how levels of development join together, where there's one base level of development, that's one level of bricks. You slap on the mortar, you're the dad, and then you slap, then you put another set of bricks on there and you're showing them step by step how to build this structure called a life. But we're trying to get them to build this structure called life and they're, they're having experiences. And then you're taking the experience of a social life and connecting it with family values and taking lessons learned on the baseball field and connecting it back to their faith and their social life and their academics. And you're, doing, you're the one that's putting all these bricks and joining them together. 
Watch this. Doesn't mortar have to be done right? Doesn't mortar have to be done right? If the building is going to stand, if the building is going to be structurally sound and stable, there's got to be enough mortar. Because there, if there's not enough mortar, what happens? The bricks can't stay together. The building can't stand. And what happens is when there's not enough mortar, it can stand as long as nothing's acting upon it. Right, So you could put a thin layer of glue, you can hold things together with tape, you can use that little rubber cement or some Elmers and hold stuff together. You can hold those things together with that until something acts upon it, until an external force faces your kid, until he gets knocked down, until he gets into trouble, until he gets into a situation he can't handle, until he gets some adversity, until the wind starts blowing and then what happens? Boom! That sucker falls because there wasn't enough mortar to hold that thing together. But then what happens if there's too much? If there's too much mortar, well, it kind of, first of all, it, it, it looks terrible, doesn't it? That's like the dad who's got the chart and the, and the radar gun and all the, and he's yelling stuff out and he's, he's lecturing his kid before the game and doing his warm up be, be after and all this. If there's too much, if there's too much mortar, the build, it looks terrible. And by the way, I've checked this. If there's too much mortar, it actually weakens the structure of the building because it's not a cement building. It's a red brick building. Nobody ever says, look at that beautiful cement building it's designed to be structurally held together. the bricks are the the bricks are the solid part the mortar is just there to hold it together too much mortar actually weakens the structure of the building too much mortar weakens not enough mortar weakens only when something acts upon it only when there's adversity and struggle and character and values are tested So what's the right amount? The right amount is enough to hold it together, but not so much that it takes away from the beauty of the structure. So if you look here at these red bricks, this uh, like this elementary drawing of red bricks, you don't see, the, nobody says, look at the mortar. Nobody says, look at how great that mortar is. No, everybody says, look at the red bricks. And the reason why they could say, look at the red bricks, because there's something stable in between holding those bricks together. So mortar should be not too much, not too little. It should be just enough and it should become invisible. It's there, it's present, it's strong. But invisible. That's what you need to be as a father in your son's life, in your son's baseball life, his academic life, his social life, his faith uh, life. Um, it, it, when whatever he's going to do, you need to be there enough that you are there, that you are the stable force that is joining things together based on values and characters, leveling experiences, slapping on the mortar. That mortar's got to be thick enough to hold it together, not too much that it takes away. And it's got to be just enough to, to be invisible, to fade into the background. So that's it for this week. Um, I love this message. It's been, it's been a, a guiding force for me is to be the mortar. And wh where am I looking? Where am I looking? Uh, you know, sometimes dad want to be the bricks. And when they want to be the bricks, they slap on more mortar. And it just, it just makes everything look terrible. Don't we cringe when we watch that, see that happen? But then we also cringe when we see the father that's so disconnected. So that's it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for listening. You know, it, it really does mean the world to me. We've gotten so much feedback on this podcast. I, I, I'm really kind of blown away. So I hope this message helped you out today. That was my intention. And um, thanks again, guys. I'll see you next week.